Chapter 4. Guerrero in the Calculator and Laboratory. Quote, he, didn't set, he said it didn't matter if a guy was married or not. He said half the married guys in the world were flits and didn't even know it. He said you could turn into one practically overnight if you had all the traits and all. He used to scare the hell out of us. I kept waiting to turn into a flit or something. End quote. We are at an impasse. If gay is a minority gender, then what about the Greeks and the Romans? Our imperial Roman colleagues can hardly be recognized with their debilitating masculine dystrophy. And their overwhelming majority contradicts the view that those who like member that those who like members of their own sex or gender are a small minority. What are the odds that of the first 20 Roman leaders, 18 were not entirely strayed by today's standards? To answer that, a peek at the numbers. Currently, the number of males aged 14 to 44 in the American Empire who self-identify as gay or bisexual is 2.8%, while those who self-report any same-sex sexual behavior is 5.2%. Using either number, the odds that so many were attracted to other men are nearing the mathematically impossible. 2.8 yields uh, 2 to the negative uh, power of 26, while 5.2 gives the odds at 1.31 to the negative 21st power. That's a lot of zeros, so it may help to compare numbers to another evil vice, gambling. Visualize a roulette table. Now bet on the same number for 20 spins in a row. Do you expect to win 18 times? You would also suspect something had gone awry if your poker buddy got four royal flushes in a row. That's what we're talking about here. Or imagine the destruction of the Earth by the enlarged sun forecast for about 5 billion years from now. Not only would the Roman Empire have had to survive past such an inhospitable event, but at least a billion times over. Not a billion more years, but a billion times 5 billion years. Only then could we expect to see a series of so many sexually flexible emperors, given the current numbers. What are the odds they hit jackpot on the first try? Not very much. The Roman emperors could not have been gay or bisexual by the current numbers. However, we cannot have been born straight by theirs. Even though science ignores history that it cannot replicate in, the, in a lab, there are studies with faint echoes of ancient Greece and Rome. A study on homophobia conducted at the University of Georgia may help us understand the discrepancy between ancient and current statistics. The study sought to investigate whether homophobic men show more sexual arousal to homosexual cues than non-homophobic men. By cues, they meant showing porn to the test subjects while a penile plasmograph measured their erections. The men were college students, mostly in their 20s, self-proclaimed exclusive heterosexuals in experience and arousal, and divided into homophobic and non-homophobic groups based on a questionnaire. Shown lesbian and heterosexual porn, both groups showed similar arousal patterns. However, the two groups diverged in arousal when viewing same-sex porn. The homophobic group, 20% of them showed no significant tumescence, 26% showed moderate tumescence, and 54% showed definite tumescence. Of the non-homophobic group, 66% showed no significant tumescence, 10% showed moderate tumescence, and 24% showed definite tumescence. Yes, homophobes have latent same-sex attractions as 80% of them showed sexual arousal to gay porn. How Romanesque. Two important observations. First, the homophobic group represents a large real-world population, by no means negligible. In the study, the homophobes made up a small majority, which doesn't seem at odds with current social attitudes and polling. Second, even among the non-homophobic men, one-third got hard watching gay porn. That's exactly one-third higher than expected by reading the definition of heterosexual. So, if we extrapolate the numbers onto the general male population, napkin math predicts that about 60% of males would get hard watching same-sex porn. You read that right. A clear majority of straight men would get hard watching gay porn. Now, those are Roman numerals, and maybe without the cultural bias, against the love between men, the numbers would be even closer to our imperial measurements. 
Some have argued that the homophobic subject displayed erections due to anxiety. I disagree with that interpretation. Anxiety is surely there, but it is an effect, not the cause. The erections cause the anxiety, not vice versa. How do I know all this? Unbeknownst to me, I was part of a similar study a few years later. In high school, while watching same-sex porn, I too frequently got erections. In the homophobia study, all men gave honest responses to their level of arousal except the homophobic men to same-sex porn. They essentially denied having erections. In my study, too, I remember rationalizing the very clear evidence staring me eye to eye. The cognitive dissonance between actual reality and desired reality felt like a split personality. I knew I liked seeing other guys naked, but a nagging force inside of me would be outraged, not at me personally, but at the general concept of such perversity, as if the topic was some intellectual matter disconnected from the matter at hand, my raging boner. It is not surprising that such latent desires bubble to the surface in the form of homophobic slurs or physical attacks against gay men. These men do not have a way of acknowledging their attractions. Guerrero solves that. In conclusion, something is rotten with the state of sexual orientation theory if 60% of men get erections to same-sex porn, while none of them admit to same-sex attractions, while only 5% of the general male population does. Am I suggesting most men are secretly less lusting after other men? Some could be, but the majority is fine with the current situation they find themselves in. They do not actively pursue their subconscious attractions, attractions that, that they may not even realize, but are there and just as inborn as effeminacy to gays. Culture tells all men to get a girlfriend, go to the prom, get married, while tarring relationships between men as morally wrong and personally effeminizing. Until recently, such relationships were illegal as well in the West. Is it surprising that with all the stigma, we only have maybe 5% willing to either admit to wanting or having same-sex relationships? Not at all. Neither the participants in the homophobia study nor I are alone in our latent attractions bubbling to the surface, despite culture working its hardest to prevent as much. Such experiences have been chronicled in print below.